In the headlines, President Tinubu suspends 5% telecommunication tax, defers Finance Act commencement date. Rising cost of food and transportation taking a toll on Lagos residents. Kano Anti-Graft Agency summons former Governor Ganduji over controversial dollar videos. And on the foreign scene, at least four killed in Russian missile attack on Lviv city in Ukraine. Hello there, good afternoon and welcome to the news update on Trust TV. I'm Abdullahi Ahmed. Welcome to the news update once again. We start in Abuja as President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has signed four executive orders, one of which contains that which suspends the 5% excise tax on telecommunication services, as well as the excise duties on locally manufactured products. Special Advisor to the President on Special Duties, Communications and Strategy, Dele Alake, announced this on Thursday while briefing journalists at the State House in Abuja. He stated that the President also signed the Finance Act effective date variation order of 2023, which now defers the commencement date of the changes contained in the act from May 2023 to September 1st, 2023. According to the presidential spokesperson, this is to ensure adherence to the 90 days minimum advance notice for tax changes as contained in the 2017 national tax policy. President Bola Tinubu also signed the Customs Excise Tariff Amendment Order 2023, shifting the commencement date of the tax changes from March 27, 2023 to August 1, 2023, and also in line with the national tax policy. Tinubu also ordered the suspension of the newly introduced green tax by way of excise tax on single-use plastics including plastic containers and bottles, as well as the suspension of import tax adjustment levy on certain vehicles. Now, residents of Lagos are calling on the federal government to address the rising cost of food and transportation costs to enable them cope with their daily needs. Victoria Tokolo, who visited the Agege main market in Lagos State, brings us up to speed with the latest, and a report is presented from our studio. Since the beginning of the present administration, Nigerians have been lamenting the high cost of transportation and increase in food prices, which have affected the cost of living of many families. This followed the president's announcement in his inaugural speech the subsidy on petrol was gone. Since then, the cost of living for an average family in the country has tripled, putting a strain on the survival of many. At the Agege main market, one of the most popular markets in Lagos for cheap food stuff. Traders and buyers are lamenting the increase in transportation and food stuff. According to them, transport to the market has increased from 400 naira to 800 naira with a bag of onions that once that was once sold for 7,000 naira to 10,000 naira is now 60,000 naira per bag, while a bag of rice that was 10,000 naira is now 35,000 naira. So that I used to buy 7,000, 10,000 per bag. Now I bought 60,000 as I yesterday. Bag. Look at the difference. Please help us to beg the government. Before, if you all, if you want to cook, now say you want to cook. If you all like 5,000, 6,000, I can reach you to cook pot or soup. Nah, nah. If you owe 10,000, I can't reach anything. A trade at the market lamented that prices of food and transport fares are increasing on a daily basis and called on the state governor, Babaji de Sanwonlu, to come to their aid. People where we are selling market because everything costs, uh, transport costs, market for market, it costs. So I want the government, Sanwonlu and our father away there for... At the home of Abuya Muhammad, who lives in Akilo Agege area of Lagos State, the father of 17 lamented the increase in transportation and food, saying it has affected his family's cost of living. We are going to on the credit right now. If like we pay 
children they are not going to Islamic, children they are not going to school. No way. Because they are now they are helping us. We are not we, 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 are, we, we are not getting anything to the heal, give them to go children carry go. Mohammed further urged the federal government to help reduce the price of transport by making fuel cheap, adding that this will in turn help reduce the cost of food stuff. Food is giving us problem. Something we are buying before 12, 13, 11. Now it's going to we buy 48, 50, 37, 38. So I don't know from now to the next two, three months, we are thinking everything is going back to the normal price. Nigerians, however, believe that if all borders are open and the price of fuel and diesel reduced, the price of foodstuff and transport fares will reduce in the country. Now, a total of 1.5 million girls have been enrolled in schools in six northern states in the last 10 years under the Girls' Education Project Phase 3. This is contained in the report of an evaluation of the project presented on Thursday in Kaduna State. The GEP3, which began in 2012 and ended in 2022, targeted 1 million girls and surpassed its goal with over 500,000 girls by household. It is aimed at improving access, enrollment, retention and learning outcomes for girls in basic education across northern Nigerian states, which include Bauchi, Katsina, Niger, Sokoto, Zamfara and Kano states. The findings reveal that 23,655 23, girls benefited from the cash transfer program and more than 67,000 teachers and in integrated Quranic school facilitators were trained, which improved teaching competency from 12% to 52%. The report also showed that 2.6 million children continued their education through alternate learning during the COVID-19, when back-to-back -back school campaigns conducted in 18,567 schools resulted in 94% of children returning to the school. The plans include activities on girls' enrollment and retention, which increased from 45% to 67%. The officer in charge of UNICEF Kaduna Field Office, Dr. Idris Baba, noted that the success of the project could be attributed to adopting a comprehensive societal approach. Baba says it could be considered as a wide range of social, psychosocial, cultural, and economic factors that affect the girls' education in the northern part of the country. Now, residents of Agbede community have appealed to the Edo State Government to urgently renovate Ayuele Secondary School in the area, one of the public schools in the community which is in a state of disrepair. The appeal comes on the hills of the sorry state of the Agbede General Hospital and other public infrastructure in the area. Nafisa Bello tells us more. Speaking on the deteriorating state of education in the area, this Agbede indigent said, through self-help, they have tried to maintain some of the classrooms because for years the students have been learning in dilapidated classrooms with little or no furniture, while some classrooms have remained locked as they are in a state of near collapse, which is dangerous to the students. The school is in a very state, is in a very sorry state. The school has been neglected for over a long period of time. We came together and formed the old student association. And as you can see behind me, we've been working around the clock. We spend a lot of money. Uh, this project is not something that an association or individual can do. We are using this medium to inform the state government to step in and please uh, resuscitate this school to its past glory. This is the school that I attended in the 80s, but now it is an ISO. And we are begging the government, please and please, to come to our aid. We need this school to be rebuilt 
let's develop this school and develop our community so that our children will have school to go. Um, we have a lot of a lot of problems facing the school, right from the, the management level, the teachers, lack of teachers, um, the infrastructure amenities are very bad, the science laboratory is no more. Uh, you can see even even the old students of the school had to come and intervene and see what they can do just to to ameliorate the sufferings and the damage that uh, that has occurred on the on the structures of the school. So, but we are calling on on the government and all appropriate authorities to see what they can do, how they can fix the infrastructure of the school. They appealed to Governor Obaseki to strive to improve education in the rural community by providing the needed infrastructure and amenities that can facilitate learning. But this we cannot do alone. Because there are some of the classes that are giving way that we need government intervention to come to our aid to see how they can assist us to fix it. If government comes to our aid, the school will still remain the school. They have uh, initiated the school to be the, the school. That sees how they propose they have initiated it. But if they don't come to our aid, we alone individually cannot fix the school. They also said one of the reasons for their outcry is the issue of encroachment of the school land by suspected land grabbers who have continued to invade and build on the government land. They want appropriate authorities to urgently wade into the situation. Nafisa Bello, Trust TV News, Benin. Now, the House of Representatives has called on the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAM, to stay action banning the embattled alleged jam cheat Mesoma Ejikeme from taking the UTME examination for three years. The decision was reached on Wednesday when the motion came off for hearing during plenary. From the National Assembly, here's the report. The media has been recently awash with news of a 17-year-old Mesoma Ejikeme Joy from Anambra State who was accused of allegedly falsifying her joint admissions and matriculations board results conducted early this year. Recall that on Tuesday, JAM handed a three-year ban on Mesoma, a decision that further threw mixed reactions from the public and forced the House of Representatives to intervene. While moving the motion at plenary, Representative Awaji Inombank Abiante said there is need to thread cautiously on the matter so as to allow justice to prevail for all parties involved in the controversy. I have watched painfully so, sir. Someone from the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board ascribing to itself the powers to accuse, the powers to investigate, and the powers to even confer punishments without giving opportunities for fair, for fair hearing. Mr. Speaker, I have only come because I know that the person in question does not have the opportunity to sit here with us to be heard. While contributing to the motion, lawmakers called for an independent investigation into the matter since JAM cannot be a judge in its own case, especially as it concerns JAM's announcement on unilaterally imposing a three-year ban on Ms. Alma. JAM's approach has failed the test of institutional procedure. JAM has alleged a criminal offence, a very serious criminal offence of forgery. Forgery is a felony. And then JAM at the same time, just like somebody stated, is also investigating this allegation of forgery without when there is, when there is supposed to be a presumption of innocence. JAM has also gone ahead to even punish the girl. I mean, come on, something is definitely wrong with that process. It's an IT issue. Some criminals created an app, and I will share it with my colleagues, so that they will find out this girl was manipulated by some adults, some individuals, in order to take advantage of our talent, to cash on the privileges that comes with the highest score in JAM examination. I believe this girl is innocent. I have no doubt she's innocent, but she's being manipulated by an adult. The motion was adopted by a majority voice voted by members when put to a vote by the Speaker Tajuddin Abbas. The Speaker immediately set up an ad hoc committee to investigate the allegation 
and report back in one week for further legislative action. Well, staying with developments in the National Assembly, the emergence of the National Assembly principal officers has caused a split in the National Working Committee of the All Progressives Congress, the APC. The National Chairman of the APC, Senator Abdullah Adamu, has faulted the process that led to the selection of the principal officers. As part of efforts to resolve the crisis, Adamu, alongside the National Secretary of the APC, Iola Omishere, met with President Bola Tinubu at the villa on Wednesday. Adamu told a meeting of the National Working Committee members and APC governors that the ruling party was not involved in the emergence of the officers. He said the national headquarters of the party through the National Working Committee did not give nor communicate any information on the choice of principal officers to the leadership of the National Assembly. To Nasara State now where the state government has called on the state medical doctors to call off the ongoing five-day warning strike action in the interest of their patients. The state deputy governor, Emmanuel Akabe, made the call in an interview with journalists while reacting to the industrial action embarked upon by the doctors in Lafia, the Nasarawa state capital. The Nasarawa state council of the Nigeria Medical Association had embarked on a five-day warning strike over the poor welfare package of its members. The warning strike we started on Wednesday, July 5th, is scheduled to end on Monday, July 10th. So, I mean, it's, we begin to think probably that something else. And they said, over taxation. And I called the salary people, are you over taxing? They said, no. As one of why their taxes are even lower than Federal Medical Center, Kefi. Federal Medical Center, go and find out. And I say, why are we taxing their, their, their colleagues lower? Go and find out. I'm not, go and find out yourself. Now they said we have call duty allowance. They want it exempt from tax. And I told her, I said, we can't do that. But as I'm exempting you, you have call duty from tax, all that it was other Employers of government to come, employees of government said, Okay, we too. And at the end of the day, we were talking about the IGR. That's what we call PE, pay, pay as we end this. And if we begin to remove some of this, we might end up not collecting tax of anybody. To Kano State now, where the Public Complaints and Anti Corruption Commission has summoned ex Governor Abdullahi Ganduji for questioning over the controversial dollar videos. In 2017, Daily Nigerian, an online publication, released some videos of Ganduji allegedly collecting kickback from contractors. In the videos, he could be seen collecting the dollars from ro before rolling them into his white dress. The ex-governor had denied the allegation, saying the videos were doctored. Are well, you watching the news update on Trust TV? Still to come. We take a look at why student loans is still considered a burden. Details of this and many more coming up ahead after the break.
Welcome back and thank you very much for staying with us on Trust News Update. Here's a recap of our top stories at this hour. President Tinubu has suspended 5% telecommunication tax while de deferring the Finance Act commencement date. Rising costs of food and transportation taking a toll on Lagos residents. Now, Tanaba State Governor Agu Kefas has banned the coronation of traditional rulers recently appointed by a former administration of Darius Ishaku. The governor says the coronation of all district and village heads and title holders is suspended indefinitely pending further directives. The directive was issued a few hours after a marathon security meeting with security chiefs in the state, leaders of Karimjo and Wurkum speaking tribes. The two communities where no fewer than 30 persons were reportedly killed over a location of the headquarters of a third-class chief in Karim Lamido local government era of Taraba State. In a circular signed by the Permanent Secretary Bureau for Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs, Babangida Hassan, the governor warned that whoever engages in such activities will not be spared by the government. The Permanent Secretary urged the traditional council in the state to ensure strict compliance to avoid further crisis. Now, the last may not, be heard, may not have been heard since the signing of the student loan bill into law by President Bola Tinubu. Reactions continue to troll the effectiveness of the law and the ability of students to repay the funds. Professor Lawan Abubakar, Bauchi Zone Coordinator of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, told Trust TV that the loan will impose a lifetime burden on students who could not secure white-collar jobs after graduation. Ibrahim Ismail has more. Last month, President Bola Tinibu signed into law the student loan bill that provides interest-free education loans for Nigerians who cannot afford to pay fees in tertiary institutions. Nigerian students who access the loan will pay in installments in two years after completing the National Youth Service Corps NYC program. While some students said the loan repayment can be very difficult for lack of jobs, others feel it can be repaid. In the law guiding the loan, he said that the student will pay it after securing a job. To those who read the bill, they will see that they said whether self-employed or civil or government job, their belief is that after two years of graduation, there must be a way that you are earning something in your life. Uh, in this country, uh, it goes a long way in alleviating some sufferings for the student. Looking at the fact that uh, the school fees and other things are very expensive, so uh, they can use the money to purchase some textbooks and other things that will be of help to them. So I think it's very important and it's very pivotal to uh, the development and the growth of the students academically. Coordinator of the Academic Staff Union of the Universities, Asu Bouchizon, Professor Lawan Abubakar said the union will challenge the federal government on the implementation of the loan scheme. You will be bedeviled by bills and at the same time serving students' loan scheme uh, 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 debt. It has become a problem and the, 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 the loan you keep paying throughout your life, you will not have anything. Throughout your life you will be servicing loan and paying bills. And people have become hopeless in those countries to the extent of getting depressed and even committing suicide. We have seen that Germany and even the U.S. had to uh, 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 write off some of these debts and it has failed in Mexico. It was tested in this country. Before signing the student's loan bill into law, Nigerian students have been struggling with registration fees increment in universities, forcing a lot of them to abandon pursuit of higher learning. Ibrahim Ismail, Trust TV News, Gombe. Now, the federal government has asked point-of-sale operators to desist from attempts to increase transaction fees, warning of serious consequences if they do so. The Lagos State Chapter of the Association of Mobile and Bank Agents in Nigeria had announced a new price list for POS transactions in the state. 
The association spokesperson, Stephen Adeoye, during an interview says the measure was put in place to deter fraud and stop overcharging by agents. In response to the move in a statement on Wednesday, the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission asked agent bankers to shun such plans. According to the statement signed by the Commission's Executive Vice Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Babatunde Irukera, the agency says price fixing was against the law and distorts the market, prevents, uh, prevents innovation and efficiency and impacts consumer negatively. The Commission says it is currently investigating the price fixing attempts by the POS agents and will sanction them if they are found guilty. Now, at least four people have been killed and more than 30 injured in a Russian missile attack on a residential apartment block in the western Ukrainian city of Lviv, one of the largest attacks on the city's civilian infrastructure since the beginning of Russia's invasion last year. Ukraine's interim minister later updated the number of the injured to 32, including one child. The emergency services say they had managed to rescue seven people from the destroyed building and evacuated 64 others. Russia attacked Lviv with 10 caliber missiles launched from the Black Sea. The Ukraine's Air Force says in a statement adding that seven of the 10 missiles were shot down. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky took to social media early on Thursday to condemn the attack and to offer his condolence to the relatives of those killed in Lviv, as well as a promise to, quote, strong response to the enemy. And finally, in sports, Casino United and Kano Pillars are back in the Premier League after spending one year in the lower-ranked league. The Northern Rivals secured promotion from the Nigeria National League, the NNL, on Wednesday afternoon. Casino United defeated Kano Pillars 1-0 in a keenly contested game of the Super 8 playoff at the Stephen Keshi Stadium in Asaba. Former Ember forward Victor Umbaoma scored the decisive goal in the 59th minute. The DND beating EFCC 2-0 in the other game. Uh, both clubs gained promotion to the Nigeria top flight uh, competition. Pillars topped the Northern Conference standings with six points, with Casino United finishing in second place with the same points, but an inferior goal difference. And that's our package on the news update for now. Do feel free to follow us across our social media platforms for more content. My name is Abdullah Ahmed. Thank you for your time and company.